Hello fellow Latter-day Saints, Kenzie Retro here and today it is review day and well, I finally did it. I finally went to go and see the Joker. And holy smokes what an experience it was. Um, it's difficult to go into detail with this film because it's... It pulled no punches with regards to the... It pulled no punches with regards to the subject matter of the film. Mental health issues and the dissension into madness which befell the Joker. But nevertheless, here we go. Uh, I will try and keep this as spoiler-free as possible, as with all my film reviews. The but with regard, um, but what it is, my with um, when it comes to my game reviews, guys, I will not be doing them spoiler free the film reviews I will be doing spoiler free so here we go let's start off with the story as always now oh boy um yeah it's it's grim it's dark it's very depressing But that's what makes it work. It's very realistic as far as its depiction of mental health issues is concerned. Especially one particular scene. I mean, the, I mean, the quote's been shared around the internet since the film came out. And it reads, the toughest part about having mental health issue, a mental health issue is people expect you to behave as if you don't. That really hit close to home for me. Because I myself have been going through my fair share of mental health battles as well. So I was I was skeptical about whether I was going to go and see the film yesterday or not. I said I was going to do it on Monday, but I put it off for a couple of days. But nevertheless, I persevered, pulled through. And it was well i mean i mean i was just i was just sitting there just taking it all in i mean there were plenty of shock there were a few shocking moments that that was just like what the heck but at the end of the day that's what makes the film what it is like i said it pulls no punches and that's what makes it work and then, of course, we get to the point in the film where we all know what happens with Batman's parents. Yes, we see Batman's parents, uh, actually Bruce Wayne's parents, I should say. Characters. Now, it's difficult to go into detail with the characters because it only really focuses primarily on one of them, and that being, of course, Arthur Fleck, who becomes Joker during the film. And... Seeing his descent into madness and eventually ending up in Arkham Asylum. Let's just put it this way. It was tough to watch. In 
then seeing him become, I think, I think one of his nicknames is the Clown Prince of Crime. I, th I think that's one of his nicknames. I might be wrong on that one. I don't know. But, yeah. It was really, really tough to watch. But again, that's what makes it work. Because you don't often see mental health issues tackled in films. I mean, you, I mean, you didn't used to anyway. Because if you were classed as having a mental health issue, if you, if you, if you, if you were hearing depressed or you, if you were hearing voices in your head. 50, 60 years ago, probably even earlier than that, you'd have been you'd have been classed as insane, and you'd have been put into and you'd have been put into an asylum, or loot or the loony bin, as one of my friends called it. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, that's, that was society, that was society 50, 60 years ago. And dare I say, that's how some, some people in society still are to this day. But nevertheless... It's, uh, I mean, you've also got Murray Franklin, who ends up befriending Arthur. Murray's played by the great Robert De Niro. And the chemistry between the two, absolutely fantastic. Then... I say, I say, that's, that, there's not really much else I can say beyond that. Onto the visuals now, and <sighs> what else can I say, really? What else can I say? They really, I say again, they pulled no punches with the visuals. They managed to they managed to make Gotham City as depressing as you would expect it to be and then essentially at the end of the film long story short when all hell breaks loose again they pull no punches with that and then of course I believe it's like what the fourth time now in films yeah it's the fourth time in a DC film that we see the death of Bruce Wayne's parents we saw it in the original Batman film we saw it in Batman Begins we saw it in Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice probably less said about that the better and of course here that's the fourth time we've seen a different depiction of Bruce Wayne's death. Uh, no, not Bruce Wayne's death. Bruce Wayne's parents' death. Dang it. Sorry. It really works. And then the soundtrack. Oh, boy. Now, the soundtrack is one of the first things I comment on when it comes to watching a film. And I'm not necessarily talking about the song choices, but I'm talking about the music score, 
which was done by Hilda Gudnadotir, however you pronounce that. Yeah, from Iceland. She did a great job with making the score fit the dark and depressing tone that was Gotham City. I mean, a couple of the song choices as well. One of them being, of course, That's Life. I will admit one or two song choices were questionable, but in a good way. Why? Because one particular scene just shows the perfect climax to Joker's dissension into madness, and the song choice really fits that scene really well. On top of the fact that it's it was one of the songs that was used in the full Monty. So there we go. Not with much else I can say beyond that. I'll probably give each category a 9 out of 10, which would give it a score of 90%. But yeah, there we go. It's a film I would, it's a film I'd recommend you go and watch, but it's not something I'd recommend for multiple viewings. Which begs the question, is this film going to be part of the DC Extended Universe? I wonder if it is, come to think of it. I wonder if it is. So it turns out, so it turns out, the graphic novel *The Killing Joke*, which is one of the greatest graphic novels of all time, which I read at college a couple of years ago, was the basis for the premise. First theatrical Batman film to receive an R rating. I mean, that I'm not surprised about. And it's not part of the DC Extended Universe. Probably best. Probably best to be kept that way. So there we go. That is it for today, folks. Hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you did, as always, hit the thumbs up. And let me know in the comments what you thought of the Joker film. Next film I'll be going to see will... 
will be the uh, biopic of uh, Judy Garland, starring Renee Zellweger. And we're going to see that on Monday. And nevertheless, previous video on the left, which was my reaction, which was me playing along with their Guess the Simpsons reference from the Fine Brothers, and my reviews playlist on the right. Podcast tomorrow, and then you've got The Apprentice to look forward to on Saturday. Until then, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out, and as always, stay faithful.